when uh, Paul Sheritz dragged me over to this ice house on Essex and uh, said, oh, you have, to, <laughs> you have to see what all these uh, young artists are doing. And uh, they, what they were doing is they would, uh, they would get visitors to come from New York and, get, and then they would get them snowed in. <laughs> and they would have to stay and hang out. And uh, they would have um, spaghetti dinners and uh, occasionally even a pig roast. Uh, Charlie can tell you more about all of that. But then in the 80s, things began to loosen up a little bit. And we had uh, cabaret and shows. I mean, the whole art world loosened up a little bit in a strange way that I'm sure you have seen evidence of tonight. And, uh, so uh, one night there was, like today, you know, kind of special, uh, uh, ca kind of a, oh, uh, uh, different acts put together to form the Hal Barber Show. And uh, I wanted to show you the uh, performance I contributed. Uh, this was in 1985. That's only 30, 30, uh, no, uh, 29 years ago. But uh, this is called um, uh, Contextualizing uh, Inventions. Yeah, and it's part of the Hal Barber Show, so it was a contest. Uh, and uh, I like the, I like the, to, I like the, I like being able to discover this uh, earlier this week when uh, uh, Carolyn and I were looking at old videotapes and uh, and here it was, and uh, it's uh, short and it's real, yeah. So, can we show that? Good. And now, it pleases me to introduce our fifth guest, in case you're keeping count, Tony Conrad. And he provides context for scientific inventions. And ladies and gentlemen, Tony Conrad. I'm going to describe some inventions. Uh, thank you, thank you. Hi. 1723 Stein. Invented 1738, George Washington's mother. Invented dentures. 1773, Franklin. Invented the lightning rod. 1774, Cornelius Colt. Invented the cattle prod. 1776, George Washington. Invented America. Witchwood. Invented. Photography. Invented hot sauce. 1821, William Penn Jr. Invented oatmeal. Winchester crap. Invented the flush toilet. 1848, Davy Crockett. Invented Texas. 1850, Elias Howe. Invented the sewing machine. 1851, Fulton. Invented. 1852, the, the steamboat. Invented. 1853, Edison. Invented the light bulb. And 1854, Edison. Invented the phonograph. 1855, Edison. Invented the phonograph. 1865, Lincoln invented assassination. 1866, nobody invented a thing. 1875, Jeff Collins invented office supplies. 1885, J. Paul Getty the first invented 1895, Ernie scanner invented. 1900, Martini. Invented. 
1911, Edwin Hustle. Phenomenology. 1914, Grandma Hannah. 1918, Influenza. Got the gramophone. Invented Kleenex. 1922, Pee Wee Albert. Invented the gutter blue. 1938, Marlena Dietrich. Invented emotion. 1944, Harry Truman invented the Manhattan. 1945, Enola Gay invented Ben Gay. 1951, B.F. Goodrich invented the prophylactic. 1952, George Goodrich invented the paperclip. 1953, Howard Doody invented the rear, the, 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 the put down from C. Invented the C crew. 1968, America. Invented meditation. 1978, Clint Einstein. Invented the Nogahide wallet. Invented Tofu. 1983, Joe Clark. Invented IRAs. Thank you. Tony thank Conrad, you, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Uh, Tony. Now, um, I was wondering, um, how widespread is the field of providing context for inventions? Uh, oh, uh, I've been doing this since about 1947. I see. Um, and uh, percentage-wise, do you know how many uh, people are into that field? Um, well, I'm glad you asked me that, Hal. Uh, there are a number of other people. I used to work with Ronald Reagan. He contextualized countries. I contextualize inventions. I but see. He did countries. We worked together on a couple of projects. Back in the 50s. Oh, oh I see. Um, but uh, it's a little tough now. Weddings, bar mitzvahs. Oh, I see. Uh, so you're not working for any big company anymore? No, I, uh, I lost my job actually a month ago. Oh. But nice of you to ask, and I'll, I'll be starting another project very soon. I see. Um, do you have any major goal um, in mind? Well, I'd like to invent an invention myself sometime. I see. Well. I wish you Thank all the you. luck on that one. I really hope you can do it. And then is somebody else going to provide the context? Well, I'm not going to tell you which one of these is a model for my invention, okay. because that might give my show yeah. away. We'll be back. Bye. Welcome back. All right. Um, and the judges have Tony's score right now. And let's see what it is. Sue? 27 for Tony Conrad. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you. You make me feel like the president. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce to you another contestant. Uh, they're from New York City, uh, and now it's time to announce the winners. Sue? Okay, our winner is Tony Conrad. And oh, thanks. And we have a second winner say. also. Oh, sorry, Tony. Our second winner is Ludmilla. 
Let's, let's, is, she, is she here still? Well. And our runner-up is Lewis. Our first contestant, Lewis Polvino. Thank you very much, all. Uh, good luck to you in the finale. Okay, now. Now it's time, unfortunately, to say goodbye, but I'd like to remind you there are auditions December 6th for our next show, which is December 14th, right here, Saturday, December 14th at 8 30. So I hope you can make it for Hal Barber Part 2. This, good night from the Hal Barber Talent Bonanza. <laughs> just bring my uh, tiny guitar along and uh, play a song for you. But um, actually, uh, songs, uh, songs, uh, the songs are supposed to be sung. Oh, 
Black Joe. That's gone. Woo! But I wrote a, I wrote a little piece on Stephen Foster. Cause I had gone through Pennsylvania up in the highlands and I found that there was a place called Camp Town. And they had races. That's right, they had races up there. So I did some research on that. And here's what I concluded. <laughs> that song about the camp town races has a line. It says, do da, do da, do da. <laughs> I remember when I heard that in uh, 50s rock and roll, that kind of sound. I heard that song in scat singing. But I don't remember any 8th, 19th century song singing doo da, doo da. That was back before recordings took place. He had an ear for black music. I think Stephen Foster was the first person to recognize scat syllable singing. Town races, do da, do da, do da. Songs are meant uh, to be sung, but the purpose of a song is to remember. That's right, the purpose of a song is to be able to remember, to remember, to remember the words. But now, we don't have to remember because it's being recorded. He's shooting it on video. And I don't have to remember, so I don't have to play a song. <laughs> we have to have some way to remember what happened years ago, though, and I'm glad that this happened tonight. Aren't you? <laughs> Thank you.